So quite a while ago, I did a video talking about GOG Galaxy and how nice it was to be able to consolidate all of your PC storefronts into a singular launcher to just make launching games a lot easier. I got quite a few comments on that video asking if I would compare against some of the other launchers that are available out there, especially the ones that also support emulation. So today I want to talk about three main solutions that I have used and I've tried. I've used them all plenty and tried to get used to all of them and we will finish it off with the one that I am using consistently on a regular basis. So first let's talk about GOG Galaxy. Now I did that whole video on GOG Galaxy and if you want a super in-depth talk about this platform I would highly suggest you check out that video but GOG Galaxy is great it's a very simple UI it's built by GOG so it has their store built into it you're also able to get the Epic Store um, built into it as well it has integrations now one of the problems with the integrations is that majority of them are community oriented only Xbox Live and Epic are supported natively by GOG. Everything else is done by people on GitHub, adding those integrations into the system. Because of that, they are relatively inconsistent in terms of how often they work. Um, Steam is often really easy to get going, but Ubisoft and Battle.net, to be fair, across almost all three of the options we're gonna be talking about today are extremely finicky and just the way that they do their login procedures, I guess, causes a lot of problems, but I often do have problems with at least one or two integrations on GOG Galaxy, which is unfortunate. However, I really do like the UI. I like how it looks. I like how it has the socials built into it. Your Xbox socials are pulled in through GOG Galaxy, which is nice. I do enjoy it. It does a pretty good job. And this is what I used as my main choice for a very long time. As we can see here, I only have a few platforms that are integrated right now with my GOG on this computer that I'm using. This is one of my ITX computers that I usually hook up to TVs. And so I've got GOG, obviously, I've got Epic and I've got Xbox set up. And you can see all of the stuff that I have through those platforms here. And I mean, again, the UI is nice. It's very simple to read. It's very simple to navigate through uh, and it does a pretty good job. Now, the next one I wanna talk about is Play Night. Play Night is an open source video game library manager. And one of the really cool things about Play Night is that it not only supports majority of the storefronts on PC, but it also supports emulation. So you can get basically every game that you're gonna play on your computer within one launcher and just have it all organized within one place. It's really nice. One of the benefits about it being open source is that people create their own add-ons, plugins and extensions for it. There's a lot of customization there's a lot of themes and stuff that you can use. It consolidates playtime counters from everywhere. It has a full screen mode so that if you're using it on a, on a TV, you can just use it with a controller and it's easy to navigate, kind of like Steam's big picture mode. And again, with it being open source, it is completely free. There's nothing to pay for here. Now, if we navigate to my play night here, we can see that I have quite a few things set up. I have the um, Xbox games, I they, it does separate them by Xbox One and Xbox Series, but these are all the ones that are for PC, uh, Xbox with my Game Pass. I have N64 games here. I have some NES games. I have SNES games. The PC Windows ones are all of the ones from GOG and Steam and Battle.net that I have installed specifically. I can separate it by storefront as well. Um, but I don't have to, so that's why this is set up the way it is right now. And there are a ton of different views that you can use. You can use this uh, tile mode. If I wanted to, I could just go into a list mode. Um, you can adjust the way that the filters work where you can kind of set up a whole bunch of different styles of filters. You can combine a bunch of filters and make this library look exactly the way you want it to, which is also very beneficial. And as I mentioned, it also has the full screen mode, which works with a controller and acts like uh, Steam Big Picture mode, which is really nice as well. Now, I do have a few add-ons that I'm using, and I have a couple of themes that I'm, I have here. I'm currently using the Mythic theme, and then I also use something called Theme Modifier that allows you to change the colors of those themes, which is really cool. And the really cool thing about these is that there is a very large library of extensions that are available. You can go ahead and browse even more of them. You can import even more libraries if you want to. 
These ones are all of the ones that I believe were default when I installed the program, but there are tons and tons of options here and you can take a look and you can even look on the website and you'll find even more, but I'm keeping this relatively simple. This computer again is mainly used on a TV and it's nice to kind of have some of these going, but I like the theme. I like the way that it looks and I've got it into a good place right now. Now, the third option I wanted to talk about was LaunchBox and LaunchBox is relatively popular as well. It and Playnite are very similar to one another because they both support not only the PC storefronts, but also emulation. You're able to consolidate all of your game libraries into one and it's very, very nice to use. If we hop into my LaunchBox here, you can see that I have uh, all of my Windows games here. And then I have some consoles imported as well. And it does a good job. The UI looks nice. It's a little bit more simplified. It's um, a little more, I guess, material modern looking, which is nice. And I mean, LaunchBox does a great job. I was able to import everything relatively quickly. It does pull a ton more information. Like you can get full trailers and videos and theme music for every single thing that you import if you want to and it's pretty intense their importing um method is a little bit different and it has a little bit more options when you do import so let's go ahead and import the completely legal N64 games that I have that are from my own N64, obviously. I'm not a criminal. And as you can see here, so we'll be able to choose if we wanna move the files over. It's gonna go ahead and grab local metadata. And then here we can choose the images that it's gonna choose for the windows. We can also ask if it wants to have movies in the background and videos we can have it apply bezels to this platform as well and we can change a bunch of other options in terms of the emulation so whether it's going to you know reduce the fact that there's maybe duplicate games in your in your folders all that kind of stuff it'll grab pdf files for game manuals and then it's going to go ahead and scan my folder it's going to find everything that i've got here and then it's going to finish and it's going to start to import all of those and then once it's done importing all of those, it is then gonna go ahead and try to grab all that metadata, grab all the covers, grab videos if I had asked for it, theme music, all of that kind of stuff. So let's let that finish real quick. And as we can see, our N64 games here are added and now it is downloading plenty of files. And depending on how many things you told it to grab, it's gonna grab quite a few um, and it'll take a while, but again, Plenty of information here. It does a lot of the similar stuff that Play Night does in terms of the stats and the data that it shows you. And it does a relatively decent job. Now, one of the things that I don't like about LaunchBox is that they do lock tons of stuff behind premium features. For example, I wanted to go ahead and try to use the big picture mode, but that is their big box, which is a premium feature only. I also wanted to separate um, or visually separate my games from different platforms within the Windows breakdown so that it's different storefronts. And if I try to do that and I do them by storefront, it is also a premium feature only. So that was kind of frustrating. But as you can see here, they each kind of have their own strengths and weaknesses and things that they tailor a little bit more towards versus others. And you can see how all three kind of have a group that may be most benefited by that particular solution. One of the really cool things about all three of these solutions though, is that with the popularity increase of gaming handhelds, like the Steam Deck, the ROG Ally, the Legion Go, and so on, it's only the ones that are running on, on Windows because none of these have a Linux version. They're only on Windows, and then GOG is the only one that also supports Mac. But with especially the ROG Ally and the Legion Go, these can really help simplify the process for launching games on those handhelds instead of having to jump from store to store, which becomes even more difficult when you do not have a mouse to use and using a full screen mode is super beneficial. And the fact that you have to pay for it with LaunchBox is kind of a bummer. So with all that said, I wanna talk about some pros and cons for each platform. So if we're gonna talk about GOG first, the pros is that it's simple, 
It's got a very nice UI. It's got some great stats and data. It's really nice that the social integrations are there with Xbox and they plan on bringing more, but there is currently not as much as I'd like. And it also works on Mac OS, which none of the other options do. For the cons, however, most integrations, as I mentioned, are community driven and therefore they can run into issues. And GOG has been in beta for almost five years and there has not been significant changes to it since. They have not added a bunch of the added features that they had mentioned and it just seems a little bit stagnant. And then obviously it does not include emulation support. For Play Night, the pros are that it's very customizable. It's open source, which means that it has a lot of support from a lot of different people and it does not rely solely on the original developer. It supports emulators and PC storefronts. Because of that large community and the open source, there are tons of plugins and extensions available. And just like GOG, it has all that stats and data that may be interesting to a lot of people. The cons, however, is that it can be a little bit daunting to set everything up. The UI is hit or miss for some, it seems. I don't mind it at all and I like it, but I did go ahead and download a custom theme to make it look the way that I wanted it to. And also as great as the add-ons and extensions are, for some people having to download something in addition to get functionality that they're looking for isn't ideal. I understand that it's not a problem for me, but I understand that some people aren't super tech savvy and may not be comfortable trying to download add-ins or extensions. And for LaunchBox, the pros is that just like Play Night, it's got emulator and PC storefront support. It is a very simple setup for importing any of your libraries, including your ROM libraries for emulators. It's got a very friendly UI. It's got a large community and it's also got plenty of stats and data if that's what you're interested in. The cons and the biggest one by far is that it locks certain features behind a paywall and you know, the full screen mode being locked behind a paywall is a massive one because that is a major downside. And most people are not gonna wanna pay for a launcher, especially when other ones have that as a free option. The other things that are locked behind paywall are theme customizations and saved filters. Theme customizations, I guess I kind of get, it's not a major requirement, but it sucks that it's locked behind a paywall and saved filters are such a simple thing and them being locked behind a paywall is pretty, annoying as well. I didn't really like that. And that's one of the reasons I don't use LaunchBox at all. And it's just overall not nearly as customizable as Play Night. With all that said, GOG is still one that I recommend for people who want a very simple interface to use and just want to get something set up, easy to go, easy to use with their GOG, Xbox, Steam, and Epic platforms, which are the most popular ones by far for a lot of people. But I personally have been using Play Night for the last while now, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I like all the features that are there. I like how customizable it is. I like how everything is free. The community is great. There's constant updates. People are creating new things all the time, and I really do enjoy it. And for the computer that I'm using mainly on the TV, it is a lifesaver. Having that full screen mode, being able to do everything with just a controller on the other side of the room is very, very nice. I like hosting little game tournaments with Mortal Kombat and, you know, uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse and tons of like local multiplayer games like that. And being able to do that all very simply without having to pull out a mouse and keyboard and try to navigate through Steam and do all these things is nice. Steam Big Picture Mode is great and it works really, really nice. You know, it's gotten some major improvements because of the Steam Deck specifically but being able to do that with other platforms as well and a bunch of my xbox games since i have the game pass and all that kind of stuff is just great and i really do love play night and it's the one that i would recommend to most people who want a more expansive launcher and with all that said i would love to know what you guys are using to launch all your games are you just launching all of the storefronts individually and launching your games from there are you throwing everything into steam and just adding non-steam games in there are you using one of the three solutions i talked about are you using a solution I didn't talk about. Please let me know down in the comment section below. Be very interested to see what you guys are doing. But that's it. A pretty good wrap up of the platforms. Again, this was a really fun thing to look into. I used each of the launchers for at least two to three months and I hopped between them quite a bit actually, which was really, really nice. Again, like I said, I used GOG for a really long time. 
Then I tried LaunchBox for a little bit. I got kind of pissed off about all the locked off features for premium. I switched over to Play Night, spent maybe about a week getting things kind of the way I wanted it to. And it has been fantastic. I have it on this little computer. I have it used on my main computer. It is great. I'm really enjoying it. It sucks that it doesn't exist on the Linux side of things, but the Linux support for just games in general and platforms isn't great. So understandable right now. And yeah, really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like subscribed, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Thoughts Time and Step Back, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do want to see any of my other videos where I talk about computer stuff and tips and tricks, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.